In this video, we're going through an introduction to polar coordinates. This may be review for you, but I think you should pay attention and hold on to the end where we solve a very interesting example. So polar coordinates gives us another way of identifying a point in the plane. We're used to using Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates where we have an X and a Y value. But here we have a point P in the plane. We want to be able to identify its location. So what we're going to do is start with a fixed point, which we're going to call the pole in polar coordinates. It corresponds to the origin in rectangular coordinates. And we still need one axis. Uh, it is called the polar axis. It is a horizontal line which has actually one end. It's really a ray. Its starting point is at the pole and it goes straight to the right. So to identify the point P, meaning find its polar coordinates, we're going to start by drawing a line from the pole or through the pole and our point P. We're going to measure the angle from the polar axis to that line. And of course you have many different options uh, because we know that we could go around the circle multiple times. We could start from the pole and go counterclockwise. We could go clockwise. We're going to use the convention that if you start from the polar axis and you go counterclockwise, that'll be a positive value of theta. And if you go in the clockwise direction, that would correspond to a negative value of theta. And the last thing we do is we measure the distance from uh, the pole to point P. And that we take as our value for R. So the polar coordinates of point P are R comma theta. So let's do some of these together. We're going to plot the following points and which are given in polar coordinates. So let me go ahead and get a good point plotter. So I want to go look at the point with co polar coordinates 1 comma pi over 3. So here I have a polar grid or polar graph paper to help me do this. So I've got the uh, pi over 3 angle labeled right here. And I have labeled these circles. Uh, this circle represents 1 or r equals 1. And the outer circle represents r equals 2. So along the angle then of pi over 3, at the circle where r equals 1, I'm going to put my dot and label that point P. Q has coordinates 2, negative pi over 4. And so these are only positive labels, so I need to understand that negative pi over 4 uh, just means go pi over the distance, or the angle, rotate through the angle pi over 4 uh, in the clockwise direction. So that would correspond to this line labeled 7 pi over 4. And I've gone a distance of 2. So that's point Q. R only goes 1 half. And its angle with the polar axis is 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 and 1 half. Halfway to the 1 circle. That is point R. And point S, I'm at 9 pi over 
four, nine pi over four means that I've already gone around the circle completely once, right? So nine pi or nine over four is two and one quarter. So two pi would be all the way around once. And I went another pi over four. And so I'm at the, on the circle where r equals two. There's my point S. Now point P says, wait a minute, R you said is a distance. And we are allow R to have negative values as well. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm still going to be on this line, which makes an angle of pi over six with the polar axis, but now, instead of starting from the pole and going, in a sense, in the positive direction, which would land me here, I'm going to go on that same line, but in the negative direction. So our, the R value can be both positive and negative. And there's my value T. So, Let's look at the point U and let's find at least four different pairs of polar coordinates. So it's on the circle where R equals two. So one possibility, what I would say the most common one is I can see that it's on the angle for five pi over six and it is on the circle for R equals two. So I could say that is two comma five pi over six. Now, we just learned that R could be a negative value. So I could also consider, well, the same line for five pi over six is the line for 11 pi over six. So I could have theta be 11 pi over six, but then my R value would have to be negative two. Now I could still think of R as being positive, so positive two, but now instead of going counterclockwise over to this line, what if I went clockwise? That'll give me a negative angle. And so in fact, that is gonna give me a negative, uh, let's just make sure, uh, starting here, I would go, that's fully negative pi, and then another pi over six, so negative seven pi over six. And Let's use that same angle. Uh, well, the, let's think about, again, this line right here. And with uh, R equal to negative two, well, I could have, instead of using 11 pi over six, I could have gone clockwise negative pi over six. So working with polar coordinates can be challenging, but if we bear in mind the fact that a single point could have infinitely many polar coordinates, uh, it looks like it's a point of confusion, but in many instances, it actually helps us. So how about converting between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates? Well, if we just set up a right triangle here, uh, the points of the, the coordinates of the point P up here in Cartesian coordinates, it's just X comma Y. And in polar coordinates, it's R comma theta, where R is the hypotenuse. And so by just applying the Pythagorean theorem, 
and some uh, triangle trigonometry, we get the following formulas. So let's go ahead and convert some polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So in our first example, r equals 3 and theta equals uh, pi over 6. So we can just get x and y directly from these formulas right here. So I'll go ahead and replace r with 3 and cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. We'll go ahead and make the substitutions in our formula for y. We find the coordinates in the rectangular coordinates are 3, radical 3 over 2, and 3 over 2. The next example, again, we need to think a little bit about the uh, unit circle here. Uh, to be able to evaluate cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. Um, one, one thing that might help me is that cosine is an even function. So it's the same as cosine of 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, so that's going to be a negative value, negative 1 half. And so multiply that times 12 to get negative 6. Uh, with y, I could use the symmetry of y. Uh, but now I'm just going to think in terms of the unit circle. The angle negative 2 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant, and so uh, y is going to be negative as well, and uh, sine of negative 2 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2, and so we get our coordinates, negative 6 comma negative 6 root 3. And that makes sense. We just said that negative 2 pi over 3 is an angle in the third quadrant. I've got a positive value for r, so the point is in the third quadrant. And so it should have negative x coordinates and negative y coordinates. So here's a, another example where we don't have a unique set of coordinates for a single point. Uh, I can go around the circle as many times as I want. And so here I went around a bunch because my angle is 181 over 4 pi. So let's figure out how many times I went around the circle. If I divide by 4, I get 45 and a quarter. Um, but since uh, one time around the circle is 2 pi, I'll write that as 44 plus 5 fourths. That means I went around the circle 44 times counterclockwise because it's a positive. And then I kept going 5 pi over 4 afterwards. So really, I should just find the uh, coordinates of the point 1 comma 5 pi over 4. So now I'll just apply the, the formula to uh, 5 pi over 4. Uh, 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant again, so both x and y will be negative values. And so I get negative root 2 over 2, comma, negative root 2 over 2. So let's convert between Cartesian, I'm sorry, let's convert these polar, oh, slow down. What we're going to do is convert these Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So I'll need to know two things, the r value and the theta value. So I'm going to use the s x squared plus y squared equals r squared to get my r value. And then I'll use tangent of theta equals y over x. Now, uh, obviously, if x equals 0, um, then I know that I'm on the y-axis. And in that case, I don't really need to uh, use this formula. If I'm on the positive y-axis, theta would be pi over 2. And if I'm on the negative y-axis, uh, theta could be chosen to be 3 pi over 2. So when I use this formula, though, I still have to make a note of whether I'm in the first quadrant 
second quadrant, third quadrant, or fourth quadrant, uh, because we know that tangent is the same in the first quadrant and the third quadrant, and it's also the same in the second and fourth quadrant. All right. So with the first point, I found that the R value is radical 2. Uh, tangent of theta is uh, negative 1, and theta is in quadrant 2. So theta is going to be 3 pi over 4. In part b, uh, my r value is going to be radical 4, which is 2. And my tangent of theta is radical 3, but I'm in quadrant 3. So I've got to choose theta to point into the third quadrant. That would be uh, 4 pi over 3. And so my polar coordinates are 2 comma 4 pi over 3. And in the last one, I don't have one of my known points on the unit circle. I just have a point with, with coordinates 1 comma 2. My r value is radical 5. Tangent of theta is going to be 2. So I'm just going to have to write theta as uh, arctan of 2. And so I just have to write the polar coordinates as radical 5 comma arctan of 2. Let's use our conversion formulas to convert some of these polar equations into Cartesian equations. And I apologize to I made a mistake. Cartesian should be have a capital C because it's named after a person is named after the mathematician Rene Descartes. So I'll fix that later. So R equals 3. You can think of that as uh, if I square both sides, R squared equals 9. And R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So that represents a circle of radius 3. Part B, R cosine theta equals 1. Well, R cosine theta directly from this formula is just X. So that's just the equation of the line X equals 1. And then part C is the most interesting one. Um, we can't square both sides. Uh, or it doesn't help us to square both sides in order to get an R squared. So what I do is I multiply through by r squared. And that helps us tremendously because I got r squared. I have a formula for r squared. And then I have 2r sine theta and 2r cosine theta. And I have formulas for r cosine theta and r sine theta. So now I can go ahead and write this in terms of x and y. But I don't want to leave it in this form uh, because it doesn't have all the information that would be useful for this equation or for identifying what this equation represents. So what I'm going to do is subtract the uh, 2x and the 2y from each side. And I left some gaps here because the next thing I'm going to do is complete the square in x and complete the square in y. And then I see that this actually represents a circle with the center at 1 comma 1 and whose radius is radical 2. Let's go the other direction. Given some Cartesian equations, let's find some polar equations for the same curves. So here I have a horizontal line, y equals 3. So I'll just replace y with r sine theta. So that is a, a fine equation. But if I wanted to solve this for r, you may commonly see this written as r equals 3 cosecant theta. I just divided both sides by sine theta. Uh, the only, uh, no, that's fine. And uh, here I have x squared plus y squared equals 16. Well, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I have r squared equals 16. So I could get r equals 4, or I could get r equals negative 4. 
So both of these formulas or equations represent this circle centered at the origin with radius four. And then x, y plus, x plus y equals 16. Here there's not too much we can do. Um, we could factor out the r. We could even go further and divide and solve it for r, divide both sides by cosine theta plus sine theta. But I didn't do that. So let's see if we can sketch some polar curves. Let's sketch the most simplest polar curves. Uh, the, the polar curves where the uh, polar coordinate equals a constant. So we know that in Cartesian coordinates, x equals a constant is the equation of a vertical line. y equals a constant is the equation of a horizontal line. Here, in polar coordinates, r equals a constant is the equation of a circle. In this case, a circle with radius 2. Theta being a constant, in this case pi over 4, that's going to be a line passing through the origin, has to pass through the origin. So it's going to make an angle of pi over 4 with the polar axis and, of course, pass through the pole right there. And so it's going to be that thing, that line, straight line right there. And so that's why our grid lines in our polar graph paper are circles and lines passing through the origin. Those are our coordinate uh, graphs there. So now let's sketch something a little more complicated. R equals to cosine theta. And I'm not going to ask you to draw anything more complicated than really a circle um, in a test situation. Uh, on a group quiz, uh, since you're allowed to use technology, uh, I'll let you do that. Um, this, uh, well, let's see what this actually represents. Uh, but I'm working through this to illustrate some of the difficulties. So uh, one suggestion to help you sketch these graphs is to start by drawing the corresponding Cartesian graph. So instead of r equals 2 cosine theta, I have y equals 2 cosine of x. So let me try to sketch that here by hand. And so this is one period of uh, y equals 2 cosine x. And then from there, I can easily identify um, at least, uh, well, I can see that, uh, for example, I'm going to start here at 2 comma 0. And then I'm going to get at pi over 4, I'll get uh, this point, where it's about, you know, 1.4. The uh, y coordinate here corresponds to the r value there. So I'm going to have about a 1.4. And at pi over 2, r equals 0. So again, the y value corresponds to the r value there. At 3 pi over 4, uh, r is negative 1.4. So I'm going along this line that passes through 3 pi over 4, but I'm going in the opposite direction. And then at pi, I'm back to here. So unfortunately, even though it looks like I could get eight points, no, four of those eight points are just overlapping points that I've already plotted. So even though it looks like I could easily identify eight points here, uh, there's only unique points, and I really, I mean, it, it's not going to be a square, so uh, I need to get some more points here. So I could use the graph and estimate values at, say, pi over 3 and pi over 6, but at this point, I'm just going to make a table here and get their decimal approximation. Now, that gets me uh, four additional points here. 
And that gives me a little bit more information. Um, and so if I connect those, attempt to connect those with a smooth curve, it's starting to look like a circle. I think it should be a circle. How can I verify that it should be a circle? Well, I could look at its Cartesian equation and I multiply both sides by R. We saw this in a previous example. Now I've got R squared equals two R cosine theta. And just like I did in the previous example, I'm gonna go ahead and complete the square. I don't need to complete the square in Y, but I'll complete the square in X. And sure enough, that is the equation of a circle, which is centered at one comma zero and has radius one. So we need all the help that we can get. And if we need to sketch or at least have an idea of what these polar graphs look like. So, oh, before I move on though, I wanna make an important point about these graphs of the circles where the, or where the center is someplace not at the origin. Uh, in particular, when you have r equals a sine theta and r equals a cosine theta, those represent circles uh, which are for uh, a cosine theta, the center is on the x-axis and for r equals a sine theta, it's on the y-axis. But in polar form, you go completely around the circle once and go through zero to pi. As theta goes through zero to pi, you go around the circle completely. So that's very different and it's a, a hard lesson to learn and that you only go, you go around uh, the circle once in pi radians. Only at the origin do you need to pi radians to go around the entire circle. So I was saying we need all the help we can get in drawing these sketches. So there are some checks for symmetry. If you think about it, you can have three types of symmetry with a curve. You can have vertical line symmetry, horizontal line symmetry, or rotational symmetry or symmetry with respect to the pole. And so if you can replace theta with negative theta and get the same uh, equation back. Then the graph will be symmetric about the polar axis. So polar axis is horizontal. So you'd have horizontal line symmetry in that case. Here's a couple of examples. Uh, R equals two minus two cosine theta. So uh, theta only appears in the cosine. Cosine is an even function. And so you're going to get some symmetry then with respect to the polar axis. R equals theta squared. Uh, that is actually um, two spirals. And one spiral is a mirror image of the other. You get one spiral for positive values of theta and you get the other spiral for negative values of theta. Of course, the R value for each uh, theta uh, whether you, after you square it will be positive. So our next test is if the equation does not change when theta is replaced by theta plus pi or when r is replaced by negative r. So theta and theta plus pi that means really rotating through 180 degrees. So you get rotational symmetry. The graph will be symmetric about the pole. And so here's an example here, r squared equals cosine theta plus sine theta. Since the r is squared, um, it doesn't matter whether I replace r with a negative r. And so the corresponding graph looks like these two circles that squished up against each other. And our final test is if theta is replaced by pi minus theta, then the graph is symmetric with respect to the vertical line theta equals pi over two. 
which corresponds to the y-axis. So here we'd have vertical line symmetry. And so here's an example, r equals one minus two sine theta. So we'd like to look at the graph of r equals one plus cosine of two theta. And we'd like to sketch its graph using a table of values and symmetry. So how do we make this table of values? Well, I know that I'm going to uh, put two theta inside the uh, argument for cosine. So I chose values of theta where two theta are the known angles on the or the angles with the well-known values on the unit circle. And so that way I could just use my knowledge of the unit circle to find the cosine of the angles, so cosine of two theta. And then to find r, I need to add one to every number in that column. And I'll use just a decimal approximation. But now let's make some checks for symmetry. If I replace theta with negative theta, well, cosine is an even function. So it doesn't change the equation. So I'm going to have symmetry with respect to the polar axis or horizontal line symmetry. If I replace theta with theta plus pi, there might be a more clever way of checking this, but I went ahead and just put theta plus pi in the place of theta. And then I used the uh, angle sum formula for cosine. And then the fact that sine of two pi is zero, cosine of two pi is one, I get one plus cosine of two pi. So I also have rotational symmetry with respect to the pole. And my third test is replace theta with pi minus theta. And again, there might be a more clever way of doing it, but I went ahead and used the uh, angle difference formula for cosine. And that showed that I still got one plus two, one plus cosine of two theta after I simplified. So I also have symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over two. So I have all three types of symmetry. I'm symmetric with respect to the polar axis. So horizontal line symmetry, vertical line symmetry, and rotational symmetry. So I really didn't need to find all these points as I'm going to see. Uh, after I plot everything that's in the first quadrant, I know that whatever shape I get and this is a lot of points, so uh, I'm going to get a very good approximation when I connect these with a smooth curve. Once I get that curve, I can just reflect it in the uh, uh, vertical line theta equals pi over 2, reflect it in the polar axis, uh, and I could also rotate it about the pole. And so I get this type of shape right here. Maybe you could call this a two-petal rose. I believe that's what it is. So let's learn some of the names and at least what they look like uh, of the most common polar graphs. So uh, I expect you to be able to sketch the graph of any circle, even if it's not at the origin. And uh, the way I would expect you to do that, though, is to convert it to its corresponding rectangular coordinate equation and graph it using that. Um, another common curve is called a cardioid. And they have the equation of this form where I have made a mistake because I should always have the same multiplier so the, the multiplier on the sine or the cosine has to be the same 
as the constant that is being in front. So let me fix that. And then I should have an A multiplied by the sine theta, just like I have an A multiplied by the cosine theta. So I could have, you know, 2 plus 2 cosine theta, or I could have 3 minus 3 cosine theta. That's what the plus or minus sign. And I could have 1 plus sine theta, or I could have 4 minus 4 sine theta. They're called cardioids. Cardioid, if you think about uh, the Latin word for heart, because the shape kind of reminds you of the shape of a heart. Uh, they have these, uh, they have a cusp right here. And that means that uh, at that cusp for the cosine theta cardioids, you're going to have a horizontal tangent line, but you'll have a vertical tangent line for the sine theta cardioids. And then the next ones are, it's a funny word. The C has this uh, cedilla, has a little tail, meaning that the C should be pronounced as an S. Uh, it's a French word. I say limousin. So limousins look like, uh, kind of look like a circle, but then they're squished on one side. And here you have different, a different coefficient from what you had uh, with the constant that's being added. And there's two flavors of limousons. This only ha has one loop, and that's because the coefficient on the sine or the cosine is smaller than the constant that's being added. Uh, so if the coefficient is actually larger than the constant, then you get an inner loop. So you have an outer loop and an inner loop with a limouson. These are more fun. And if you have this r squared equals, here they write it as a squared, but it's r squared equals some constant multiplier by either cosine of 2 theta or sine of 2 theta, uh, you get what's called a lemniscate. It looks like a propeller. And then we get the roses. You can have roses with uh, three petals. That's if the argument to uh, sine is 3 theta, or the argument to cosine is 3 theta. Or you can get four petals. Oddly enough, you have, if you have 2 theta, I think um, really it could be 4 theta, 8 theta, 6 theta. Any even number is going to give you four petals here. So I'm glad you stuck with me through this video, because now we're going to uh, answer an interesting question, which is to find all points of intersection between these two curves. Now, r equals 1, that is just a circle. And r equals 2 sine 2 theta, um, that is a uh, what is that? r equals 2 sine 2 theta. I'm going to have to look this up again because, yeah, it is. It's a four petal rose. Exactly. So it's a four petal rose. OK, great. So let's go about it. So let's give it a try. We The most natural thing in the world, after all the algebra we've gone through, would be to set these two equations equal to each other and then solve for theta. So sine of 2 theta is 1 half. That means 2 theta is either pi over 6 plus 2 pi k or 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And divide everything by 2. So theta would be pi over 12 plus pi k or 5 pi over 12 plus pi k, where k is an integer. And hey, that makes perfect sense, right? All of our algebra is correct. So let's look at the graphs. Did we find all the points of intersection? We've got our four petal rows. We've got our circle with radius one. And I have highlighted the 
points for the intersection that we found. And guess what? We only found four, but there's eight points. How did we miss it? What did we do wrong? Well, it's not that we did anything wrong. Like I said, all of this is perfectly correct. But what we failed to remember, so it's just an incomplete solution, we failed to remember that the curve r equals 1 is identical to the curve r equals negative 1. And so to find all points of intersection, I have to now set r equals negative 1 to r equals 2 sine of 2 theta and solve for that. So now I'll get sine of 2 theta equals negative 1 half. And that means that 2 theta is going to be 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k or 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And so theta now will be 7 pi over 12 plus pi k and 11 pi over 12 plus pi k. So that fills in the missing 4. Somehow I lost my graph, but I'll just put those in. Having some technical difficulties. So the that gets me the final four points right there. So I hope this uh, review of uh, polar coordinates was useful.